The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the June 16th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past hope everyone out there is having a great day and hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one and the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us not to us that's right we do not make that one little two by four shift it means we can find a gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us now today you and i we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 60 minutes, really about 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you can't dial in, we've got you covered. You can always let your fingers do the walking. That means go ahead and send me an email. Send it to Steve at TFN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, in our Tiger's Den, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, I've got all the U.S. indices trading on the downside. You've got the Dow up 586, S&P's down 105, NASDAQ 408, Russell's off 73, semi's down 160. That's nearly 6% to the downside. Trend is off 3% or 442 points out there. You've got gold trade out at 1852, likely on its way to 1879. Silver trade at 2194. Lights we crude up at 117, even steep. And natural gas trade out at 762. And the 30 year treasury up 23 ticks, 133.04 is the print there dollar wise the upside stock wise it's mostly etfs out here what's the stock latest technologies holdings up six bucks or 36 percent well, that's a good move total capital that's up five percent or three otherwise it's all etfs to the upside to the downside it's not all etfs it's booking holdings off 115 google's off 70 tesla's off 55 mercado libre is down 46 chipotle's off 43 so we've got some movers and we've got some shakers out there so let's begin by uh, taking a look at what's going on the play-by-play -play, the intraday chart out here and we'll take a look at the uh, es mini to begin we'll look at the es mini and the nq give me a moment here to change our window screen and uh, here you've got the daily in the left hand side you're going to be forming bar number seven today that says that we could anticipate a td9 count bottom to form between friday and next wednesday we're off on uh, monday uh well really but the, uh, well let's say between friday and next tuesday at this stage here if we take a look at the five hour time frame chart the five hour time frame chart uh does not have a bottom pattern in play as we speak that uh, td9 count that it did have has been negated it does have a roads momentum indicator signal that's been triggered but that needs a bullish reversal candle to confirm that pattern even if it did get confirmed we can tell you that 3839 is a key level of resistance for the es mini on the other intraday time period charts out here, just looking to see if I can find any kind of bottom signals, I've got to go to the 15-minute chart. And that says that price would need to close above 36.98 to suggest a further rally out there. 10-minute chart. I mean, we're talking about real intraday time periods out here. So other than that... Um, so no bottom of any significance, at least at this stage of the game, has been um, has formed. If we take a look at uh, the... Uh, not natural gas. Give me a moment here. The NQ's uh, set of uh, charts, same set of charts. This is going to take a moment to run out here because I do happen to have a number of windows that are open um, in anticipation of some of the things that we'll take a look at today. Won't take too long. But in the case of the NQ, yesterday, the interesting thing is it confirmed a buy the D point bottom. 
And that says that if price closes above the high, the low from uh, Tuesday, the low from Tuesday is the support level, and that's at 11,236. We're at 11,200. If the NQ closes above 11,236 today, it will still retain that buy the D point pattern. If we take a look at the uh, five hour time frame chart right now, it's hard to say this uh, pattern, this candle, I should say, does not complete for another 50. Uh, minutes out here, 49 minutes to be exact, and if price closes below 11.285.25, uh, then it's going to negate that pattern. And then you do have a Rhodes Mintum indicator signal that's triggered. It would need a bullish reversal candle. From an intraday standpoint, the only bottoming signals out here, again, 15-minute, 10-minute, uh, five minute chart. Five minute chart says a close above 11, 221, 25 should lead to higher price. That higher price is likely 11, 262 to 11, 285. The real key level resistance out here for the NQ is 11, 714, the top of its five hour uh, time frame equity future contract out there. So that's what's going on short term. How about the bigger picture out there? Well, when we take a look at the bigger picture, it's basically ugly. We say ugly, if we take a look in the upper left-hand corner, you got the yearly chart for the Dow. The Dow was very close to trading below last year's low out there. That is a very bearish message. If we take a look at the monthly time frame chart, it's got that Rhodes Mintum indicator top. That suggests that price is going to go target 24,843 or 30,000. That is over time. It's not going to happen tomorrow, but that is currently its price target. There is a short-term possible level of support. We take and then we're talking about the Dow Cash Indice. So I'm just looking at the top row out there. As you can see, price is at or near a TD nine count breakout level of thirty thousand oh one four. If that holds at week's end, not that that's a bottoming signal, but oftentimes pulling back to a breakout area can form a bottom, maybe just short term, um, likely would be just short term here. The daily time frame chart today should form bar number seven. There's no other bottom signal that is present out here. Not that one couldn't form today, but it's going to require one heck of a rally. Odds favor here that the next short term bottom would form between tomorrow and next Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday. If we take a look at the Dow Equity Future contract, that's trading below. Uh, that's trading on the uh, level below us. Uh, nothing of any substance. Well, I can say that on a daily basis, the Dow Equity Future contract did form a nice bull sash candle, and that confirmed on a daily time frame a buy the D point. That requires price to close back above 30.018 today to retain that. Now, you'd have a buy the D point on the equity future contract. You will not get that on the cash indice. If we go move over from the Dow charts and take a look at what's going on inside the S&P 500, if you give me a moment, we'll get over to those charts. And on the S&P 500, what we've got is you are very close to trading, just like the Dow, below last year's low. Again, a bullish signal. Price right now, now the month is not over. It's only the 16th. But price is trading below the breakout level on a monthly basis, 37.23. Typically, when you close below one level of support, you go to the next. Now, we're not at the end of the month. But if we do close below 37.23, then 29.65 becomes the number to the downside. And the weekly chart is already supporting that. Why? Because price is trading below. It's next weekly, it's, it's taken on one level of TD Nike out breakout support. We're now trading below level number two, which is 38.19. This suggests that price wants to target on a weekly basis 32.79. The S&P, like the Dow, uh, has a uh, bar number seven count, so we could get some type of short-term bottom between tomorrow and next Tuesday. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. of booming inflation where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk part, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Now it's off 608 S&P 108. Let's go out to Brent in Martinez, California. Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing today? Uh, doing quite well, Steve. How are you? Excellent. Thanks so much for asking. So I know we're going to talk about Microsoft. MSFT, folks, is the uh, ticker symbol out there. Uh, tell me what I can help you with. Well, I had that um, one stock and then also one ETF that I was looking at. I just observed that they, with the market going to lower lows, those stocks were still, I think, at least at the uh, low of the other day or maybe a little bit above uh, that yes. and then IBB were the two I was looking at. So I was hoping you could take a look at them and I'm uh, thinking about potentially doing a trade um, either this afternoon or maybe tomorrow, just the, the end of week trade. Okay, so with regard to Microsoft, the cool thing about that, it would, in taking a, a long trade there, is that you have a brand new bullish structure daily profile that formed. So you now, and what's nice is you know that support should be between 244.78 and 248.04, exactly where it's trading right now. Resistance is going to be 257.85. Now, it's not just the profile that makes that an interesting lookout here. It's the fact that you also have a confirmed... Well, do we have a confirmed A to B equals CD? There's a number of them out here. When I take a look at the daily time frame chart, Brent, I would use the high from uh, November 22nd as my A point. And then, um, yeah, so then the only real A to B equals CD, there's really only one A to B equals CD pattern, the way that this is setting up. March 8th, 8th would be the B point. And the C point out here, what is, let's see, 315, 315.82, 315.95. That's going to be the high from March the 30th. So it hasn't really completed the one-to-one. -one. It, visually, it looked like it did to me. But now that I pulled the chart back and used the proper A to B equals CD, um, markings out here hasn't really completed. So the daily isn't... Uh, You've got a nice bullish structured profile. I think it's just a little bit too far away, which is 236 is that one-to-one -one price projection out there to call it a confirmed by the D point. Uh, let's go take a quick peek at my white background charts out here because what we're going to see is on a weekly basis, granted, I show that same A to B equals CD pattern. And even though that's not going to complete, what the weekly chart is going to do, or it appears will do, is form a TD9 count uh, bottom. 
this week. So know that's a bottoming signal on a weekly basis. So let's open up this chart here. This is going to be the bar following bar number nine. And even though price is below its breakout level of 249.81, what you like to see is some type of bottoming pattern happen right around where price had broken out. And that's what you've got. You've also got wave number seven. That requires a higher low next week to confirm that pattern. Uh, this would suggest that uh, price would bounce up towards its oscillator and change line that's currently printed at the 270 29 270 30 type range out there so any other time frame let's see charts out here that no other real significant signals that i see so based upon that information is that enough for you to consider taking that uh, trade a weekly bottom signal not so much on the daily but at least you've got a new profile to contend with out there does that uh, or at least does that give you the information you were looking for it does there's actually Two other things, if you wouldn't mind, if, if you sure. have a delay here. So when you had the black chart up, black background okay. chart up on the monthly, you would have to expand it out. But just looking at it visually, I mean, it looked like there was red bars, then a green bar, and then red bars. So it almost looked there was a bigger AB equals CD. But again, I was looking at the chart kind of compressed, so I can't really tell. Yeah, That's so. Expanding it out yeah, hard to – so in order to do an A to B equals CD on the monthly time frame, I would have to use the same candle as my B point and my C point. And that would be the candle that the, for the week that – or for the month of March out there because March made a slightly lower low than February. So that could be the low that we would use. The uh, next month, April, had a higher low. And then when we use the uh, when we use a low, we've got to go towards the highest high. Turns out it happened to be during that month of March as well. I don't really like you. It's not that you can't. You can. Uh, so on a monthly, I'm not so sure about the A to B equals CD pattern. But what we do know in the case of Microsoft is it is trading below the bottom of its bullish structured monthly profile. And I've got the black background charts up there for you right now because of that time delay. You may have noticed on the monthly time frame chart that suggests that Microsoft wants to trade down to 211.94, and that's its breakout area. But the weekly does have a valid bottom, very much like the NQ does out there. Uh, very much like the semiconductors, but they are the only indices that have the NASDAQ Composite has it as well. They're the only indices that have the weekly TD9 count. So not completely sure what to make there, but the NQ we know or the NASDAQ and the semis are certainly strong enough to lift the markets higher out there. And then if you wouldn't mind, I mean, you kind of had them up there, but on the white background, just are you showing anything on the, you know, 30 minute? 60 minute anything in that range or any of the shorter term like is there any kind of bottoming patterns potentially no. or, or not there I, I don't have anything there okay. of significance what was there some bottoming signals that led to a rally a uh, yes uh, you know, that was really taking place more yesterday than it was today. So those bottoming signals are still out there. Very much like you said, uh, price hasn't taken out the lows of yesterday or the day before. But price is pulling back to that level of support, potential level of support. That's that bottom of that new daily profile, 244.78. So I think it's kind of easy because if price closed below the bottom of that daily profile, you know, you'd probably jettison the position, the trade. Okay. And if you wouldn't mind, I don't know if there's time or not, just to do the IBB. Sure, sure. Or Let me do this SPI, here. Yeah, whatever it doesn't. The IBB was the one I was looking at. Okay, so we'll pull up the IBB. We'll just look here, folks, at the uh, daily, weekly, and monthly time frame chart. Should be quicker to populate uh, this three set of charts out here. And so, in the case of IBB, on a monthly basis, you're going to get a TD9 count bottom uh, this uh, month. You can get a lower low uh, next uh, month and uh, still maintain that pattern. On the weekly basis, you have a confirmed Roach Mintum Indicator bottom. And that uh, requires that price close the week above 105.39. You're at 105.68. The daily time frame for the IBB has Roach Mintum Indicator signal, but no bullish reversal candle just yet. So this looks like maybe you get that uh, tomorrow. Uh, you could still get it today. You could end up with a hammer candle on the IBB, and then that would give you your signal there. So uh, you got a nice potential bottom on the monthly. You've got one on the weekly. You'd just like to get the daily now 
to give you some type of confirmation. On the daily for the IVB, the bottoming signal could be a retest of that prior low. And the prior low that I'm referring to was from the date of May the 12th out there. And the volume was 4.7 million shares. And that was tested on Tuesday with 2.6 million shares. And it's being tested right now with about 1.6 million shares. So, you know, you've and, and I know that you take a look at, at certainly – a test of swing points on lighter volume. So that's what I would see on the daily time frame for your bottoming signal. I prefer to get a bullish reversal candle to confirm that Rhodes momentum indicator signal, though. Does that help you out, Brent? That does very much so. It's not a lot different from Microsoft, it's, you know, basically in the analysis. So that helps. No, and I really appreciate it. And those are two that I'm looking at. To, like I said, potentially do a trade for the Friday trade. So. Thank you Perfect. so much, Steve. I hear we're, we're coming to a, a, a break here. So, You have a great weekend, Brent. Thanks so much for calling. That was Brent in Martinez, California. We come back. We're going to go look at the GDX with John in Philly. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow down 612, S&P off 109, NASDAQ 100 down 418 points. Let's go out to Philly and speak with John. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing today? Steve, I'm doing very well. Uh, thanks for taking Excellent. the call. My pleasure, as always. So I know we want to talk about all things GDX. Tell me how I can best help you. Very specific question, Steve. Uh, first background, of course, GDX topped at 45, actually two full years ago now. And uh, it's come down, and I observe, anybody can do this, of course, uh, on the daily chart in the past nine months, excuse me, past nine months, GDX has come down 
and tested 29. This week was the fifth time. Um, I'm always thinking with that sort of phenomenon, I'm thinking Tom O'Brien's saying, if you can't bust them down, you're going to bust them up. Um, so it's very clear to any trader, or you could bottom pick GDX, you know, 30, 29, 31, right in this area. Um, and if it busts under those 29 lows, well, you could take your small loss. Um, so the, the trade idea is kind of simple and mechanical. What I'm calling to ask you about, Steve, is, is there anything that you see in your work that suggests busting them up right from here is unlikely? Uh, that's the question I thought I'd uh, put to you. The answer could be yes or no, but I'd be interested to hear you just uh, address that with your tools. So I appreciate you doing that. And if you don't mind, I'd like to listen to your response off air. Absolutely. So a uh, great, uh, great uh, question. Trying to trick me up. I love it. Uh, uh, just kidding. Just just kidding out there. So uh, we'll go ahead and answer that question. So thanks for the call. And uh, John, have a, a great uh, weekend and enjoy, enjoy the holiday. So the question is, is there anything that I can see that would suggest that the uh, GDX has not made a tradable bottom? And so the very first thing we're looking at here are the GDX charts. So you've got the monthly, the weekly, and the daily time frame. As John had pointed out, over the last uh, several months out here, many months, and we'll just simply come back, I'm looking at the monthly chart out here, uh, you can see that the, uh, the 29 area low on a monthly basis was back in September of 2021 out here. And uh, you can see that prices come down and tested that area several times. So we'd have to go take a look at the daily chart. We already know that is a potential support area. When we look at the weekly time frame chart, although I don't have a topping pattern, maybe there was an A to B equal C, would have to go look. But we do know it doesn't really matter that price is pulled back to its breakout level. I know bottoming pattern, but remember coming back to a breakout area can in itself be a bottom. That's at 29.51. So John, as long as that holds out there, uh, then what price should do, especially on a weekly basis, because the asset and change line has changed colors, just move up to 33.81 out there. So I would say this, I would say the key 29 area is 29.51. And if price were to close below that on a weekly basis, then that would be the, that would be the first message that, hey, Maybe this time there's something different out here with regard to that $29 area. But that's not the message at 1.33 in the afternoon on June the 16th. And that is especially not the message at 1.33 in the afternoon because right now on the daily basis, we have a roads momentum indicator confirmation, semi-confirmation. Why? Because it's 1.33 and we need this confirmation at 4 p.m. And what you'd really like to get here, John, is both the bullish engulfing candle that we've got or some type of bullish reversal candle and a close above its red oscillator and change line, which is where we're printing right now. And that oscillator and change line is exactly at 3061. We're at 3065 or so out there. So you'd like to you don't have to get that. But if you did get that, that improves the odds of price trying to bust them to the upside. Now, the bust them to the upside in the GDX is 33.57. If price can clear 33.57, uh, then you're on the way to 36.17. So the GDX charts out here, this looks pretty good, but they might, that may not answer everything for us. So let's be a little thorough here. What's the next thing that we want to look at? Well, we want to understand because of the relationship between gold, silver, and the mining equities, we want to at least go take a look at how gold is trading. As we take a look at gold right now, we're having a nice day here in the US but are we having that same day in euros no we're just up slightly are we having that same day in yen no we're really just up slightly and in terms of pounds we're trading lower so ideally with gold when gold makes a breakout uh, what you want to see is you want to see gold breaking out in all currencies out here. And we don't really have that message. Is it enough of a message to say that the 29 level is not going to hold? No. But it's not as if we have the wind at our backs to say, you know what, we haven't been able to bust them down, so we're definitely going to go try to bust them up. If we get gold trading higher in all the currencies, John, then that says that bust them up theory certainly holds water. 
What's the next thing that we would want to look at out here? Well, I would say the next thing would be what are the instruments with inside the GDX doing? To me, that's the that's really where the metal uh, hits the uh, road out there. The rubber hits the road. So let's go take a look at that. And the question now is, and this is what you really want to see, you want to see the heavily weighted instruments truly leading the charge and having bottom signals. So let's go take a look at those. Now, I haven't updated the... Um, I haven't updated the holdings with inside the GDX for a couple of weeks. And these may be slightly out of order. They're probably not too out of order if they're out of order at all. And what I mean is that if we take a look at the GDX, I'm pretty sure somebody confirmed this for me, but Newmont Mining should be the number one holding in there. So if the GDX has bottom, we most certainly want to see a bottom here. Well, it turns out it's got that same. We're in the upper left-hand corner. Now, let me make sure that I've got the chart up. Yep, we do. Uh, upper left-hand corner, you've got that Rhodes Mintum indicator signal, bullish engulfing candle. But we can see here, John, is price is finding resistance at that red oscillator and change line. You would like to see NEM, Newmont Mining, close above 64.40 today. If we take a look at gold out here, G-O-L-D, the ticker symbol. This has a confirmed Rhodes Mintum indicator signal. That's assuming we get this bullish engulfing candle. And in this instance, Instance, it is trading above that red oscillator and change line, which is printed at 1983. You want to see a close above that. Now, in the case of gold out here, it's got resistance at 2139 and a continued move higher. If you can close above that, then you're up to the bust them to the upside range. Uh, Franco Nevada. Franco Nevada does not have a bottoming pattern. It topped with a TD9 count and price is pulled back to its breakout level. That's at 135.11. Again, pulling back to a breakout area can be a bottom. It's just not a bottom pattern per se. Uh, Ignico Eagle, AEM. So we've got the top four. You've got a bullish engulfing candle price dealing with its red oscillator and change line. If price can close above that, that would be a plus, and that's at 50.77. Uh, What's it? Uh, WPM, uh, precious metals, uh, wheat and precious metals uh, needs a bullish reversal candle today. Goldfields has a bullish engulfing candle. It already has a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom out there. Uh, you're getting in Rand Gold. You're getting a bullish reversal candle to confirm a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom here again. That oscillator and change line. So here's uh, we've got basically seven of the top eight instruments inside of the uh, GDX are showing bottom signals. If we go take a look at some of the le lower weighted, lesser weighted, I should say, uh, instruments out here, um, let's go see what they're doing. And so those lesser weighted instruments, KGC, Kinross Gold, Yamana, a pass out there, uh, B2G out here. As we look for bottom signals, what we don't see here, John, is bottom signals among this group. So it's going to be the other group that has to take us higher. And maybe what that says in the case of the GDX, you're better off making your own little basket of the GDX. If you think those are going to take off to the upside, maybe you just do it in those uh, seven of those top eight out there. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. 
Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Let's take a look at uh, Nike out here for Dan in the uh, Tiger's Den. When we take a look at uh, Nike, if we start with the monthly time frame chart, you'll see a nice Rosemontum indicator top, and price has been below its breakout level, 126.68. So this is suggesting, Dan, to you and I, that over time, what Nike wants to do is pull back to the 84.11 area. That's its next breakout area. If we look at the weekly chart, the only way that's going to happen is price is going to need to close below 103.46. 103.46 is the bottom of its bullish engulfing candle that generated and confirmed a Rosemontum indicator top. Now, what we can see out here in the case of Nike on the weekly chart, that's the center chart that we're looking at, Dan. 121.30 has been really key resistance. The top of the profile, folks, is where buyers reside. And we can see that in plain daylight out here. Now, on a daily time frame, you had Nike complete a TD9 count top. It does it on June the 8th. Then price moves lower. And now today, uh, price is below the bottom of its daily profile. It was uh, got back above it yesterday. It was below it the prior two days out here where price ran into resistance was that red oscillator and change line. Price is trading into its swing point on a daily basis from May 25th. Dan, that swing point has volume of, you already know this, but 7.1 million shares. We're pulling back into it with 3.4. I would say that if Nike closed below 108.89, what price should do, even if it's on lighter volume, and it looks like it might be lighter volume, but not a guarantee just yet, uh, you close inside a swing point, odds fade. And if it's with volume, then it really gives you the message of going and retargeting the 103.46. If it's lighter volume, you're not sure. But as long as price closes inside it, it might. The thing that would stop it from getting down there might be the bottom of its bullish structured weekly profile. And that's at the price level of 107.03. Now, if you close below that tomorrow, 107.03. You know, not really ideally what you want to see out there for your long trade inside of uh, Nike. So I hope that helps you out again. Longer term, 8411 looks like the price target. First, you'd have to see it close below 10346 on a weekly basis, I would say. And then that would more likely come to fruition out here. And right now on a daily basis, you've got uh, price testing a swing point trading inside it and with a little bit lighter volume. But the day is not over. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for the request. Let me check the emails out here. And uh, uh, don't have any requests by email. I think I've gotten everything inside the Tiger Den. But if I haven't, I want to. And so if I have not and you've got a request out there, please go ahead and punch it in. Now, there was a request earlier inside the Tiger's Den to take a look at the euro. So let's go do that out here. I don't recall if I was able to post those charts or not. So we'll just go, go take a look at the euro. So the euro right now, I think I did. If we take a look at the euro... First, the first most important chart here is the monthly chart. It has a TD9 count bottom. 
The cool thing there is if we were to see a close below last month's low, that pattern would negate itself, and that would signal that the euro is getting ready to go into crash mode. When I say crash mode, I mean move down to about 82 cents, get below par here. And if that happens, what we're going to see or should see is we should see a gigantic influx of capital. I don't care what is going on in our economy here. We should see a, a gigantic influx of capital from Europe that will push our markets higher. The U.S. dollar index, the uh, likely the equities out there. But we've got to see that fail. We don't have that fail. What we can see on the monthly basis is a changed oscillator and change line color. And that says that over time, on a monthly basis, price should go approach that level. It's, it's printing at about 111 right now. The weekly time frame had already confirmed a buy the D point pattern. It did it about four weeks ago when it formed that little bullish engulfing candle. That was actually the week of... Uh, May the uh, 20th. This week looks like you might have a hammer candle, but it's too early. It's just Friday out there. What we do know is as long as that low holds, and it's really the same low as the TD9 count uh, pattern out there, as long as that low holds, then uh, we should see a further rally. Price of the euro has pulled back. Uh, yesterday was testing its breakout level. The day before was testing it. The day before was testing it. Right now, you've bounced off of it and price is above that red oscillator and change line. That says that price should go target its most recent high. That was a TD9 count on May 30th out here, and that's in about the uh, 107 area. On a 30-minute basis right now, you've got a TD9 count pattern. This will tell you if the euro is going to continue its rally today. If price closes above 1.0542 to be exact, then the pattern will get negated, the TD9 count will get negated, and say we had higher. Short of that happening, what you then should see is you should see on a 30-minute basis, so now we're getting really granular here, we should see the euro pull back and test its oscillator and change line. That's currently printed about 105. As we look at the other intraday time frame charts, there are no topping signals out here. So it'll be the 30-minute that controls what the euro is going to do next. You should know you've got that topping pattern out there. Again, a close above it will say we just had a little bit of a hiccup and a strong momentum to move to the upside, and the euro should continue to move higher and then the dollar should continue to move lower. So that's what we've got with regard to the uh, euro out there. Um, I don't have any other requests uh, that I am aware of. So what do we want to do next out here? What do we want to do next? Uh, let's go take a look at some signal changes that took place yesterday. Uh, so one of those signal changes is in the 30-year Treasury. So and that is moving higher today. So let's go take a look at that. We're in the September contract here. We'll just look at the monthly, weekly, and the daily time frames. They'll just simply populate faster for us. And then I won't have to tell you stories. Not that I can't tell you stories, but we don't want to get way off track. So we take a look at the... Uh, it's really just the daily time frame that I'm mostly interested out here. Well, let me just do this here, pull this back. So you can see that uh, we've got a rose momentum indicator signal that was triggered yesterday. You've got a piercing candle. Right now you show a bullish hammer candle. It doesn't matter whether it's a hammer candle or not today. You already got that signal. What price should do with regard to the 30-year treasury is go approach that 134 and change area. That's the oscillator and change line. And if price can get above that, what the 30-year is telling us is it's going to rally. The 30-year would rally and rates would uh, come down. But price has got to overtake that, uh, has got to overtake that uh, oscillator and change line out there. What else should we go look at out here? Let's go take a look at our index ETFs. Let's go see what we've got going on. Let's take a look at volume. Uh, you know, does the volume matter today? Well, we're trading below yesterday's low. So if we close below yesterday's low, yeah, I'd say the volume doesn't necessarily matter. It can aid us. But right now, volume inside of the uh, spies out here, you're at about 64 million shares. Yesterday, you bounced higher with 125 million. So you're pulling back with lighter volume. It doesn't matter. You've got the A to B equals CD pattern out here. And what the uh, spies are going to need is a bullish reversal candle. We're trading below the bottom of its daily profile. That's at 375.19. So that's not a good scene at 149 in the afternoon. This is suggesting to move down to the next price target of that A to B equals CD. And that price target is 349.88. Sure, we can draw other A to B equals CD patterns in here, but the other ones we'd be drawing are the ones that are along the C to D leg. We don't need to do that. We already have the larger pattern that's established, and all we'd have to do is wait for a bullish reversal candle to confirm a buy the D point pattern. When you take a look at the Qs, they're moving lower with pretty good volume. You get 50 million shares today. Yesterday, last time we were down at these lows was on the... Uh, 
two days ago, and he had 64 million shares. So, yeah, I'd say you've got pretty decent volume with regard to price attacking that swing low out there inside the queues. The next price start for the QQQs is the 1.272 expansion level at the 255.75 level. For the Diamonds, the next target, 295.33. And for the IWM, it has not completed its one-to-one. A to B equals CD power. That would take us to 155.75. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be back in just a few. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. So Mark D. writes in. He wants to take a look at uh, Berkshire Hathaway out here, BRKB. Uh, you're looking to buy it. So on a weekly chart out here, Mark, you've got a uh, confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside. That's going to be confirmed this week. The B point had volume of uh, 22.5 million. You're at 22.1 million with a day of trading. That one-to-one -one price target gets you down to 255.25. I am not saying that's where price stops. Price is trading below a brand new monthly profile, the bottom of which was 281.25. 21. So that's not a good scene out here. Uh, so we take a look at uh, Nike. It looks like it won on Nike. Berkshire Hathaway looks like it wants to head lower. Now, on a weekly basis, this week is going to become bar number nine. So more likely than not, uh, we see price move lower next week inside of Berkshire Hathaway. And maybe on a weekly basis, uh, we get a uh, 
We get the completion of the 1 to 1 A to B equals CD. We get a bullish reversal candle on a daily time frame. And you get a TD9 count bottom at its breakout support level around 260. 255.25 is the 1 to 1 extension. So all that seems like it might come together for you. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for the request. We had Hector and Patty want to take a look at Exxon Mobil. And uh, Hector just says Exxon Mobil has a test and rejected its daily high volume day out there. Um, don't know where that high volume day is. I guess that is, I'm not sure which day you're looking at. Um, but here's what we can say about the ExxonMobil. It's now trading below the bottom of its daily profile, very likely going to go target the top of its weekly profile. That's at 89.88, Hector and Patty. Um, is there an A to B equal C D to the downside? That's a great question. The uh, B point out here would be the low from June 13th. There were 33 million shares. You're only at 19 million shares. So you may get an A to B equal C D to the downside pattern, but it doesn't look like you're going to get the confirmation, meaning with the volume. That does not mean that it will not complete. A one-to-one -one A to B equal C D to the downside inside of Exxon Mobil would take us to 8702. Makes a lot of sense with the top of that profile at the 8998 area. Hey, folks, thanks so much for joining me on Terrific Thursday. Tomorrow, we're going to record the show from 8 to 9. So please join us early. But if not, have a, uh, have a great day, a great weekend, and a great holiday weekend, and I'll see you on Tuesday, but hopefully tomorrow morning. Take care.